Lyft cut rates in nearly a dozen markets recently. Uh, the per mile rate here in Minneapolis was cut by nearly 50%. And all I can say is big mistake, big, huge. Their justification for these rate cuts is now in our markets, we're being paid time and distance from the moment that we accept the ride. So as soon as we accept the ride now, we're being paid when we're en route to the passenger, when we're going to pick them up. So when you first look at this, you think, great, this is a step forward. We're now getting paid as soon as we accept the ride. But then you look at the per mile rate and it was cut by nearly 50% here in Minneapolis. And my biggest issue with these rate changes are long rides. Long rides used to be ideal. They used to be something that you wanted to accept. They were what you aimed for. Now, since they cut nearly cut our, our per mile rate here in Minneapolis by nearly 50%, those long rides are not lucrative anymore, especially if there's a short pickup there. And Jay actually did a video explaining these rate changes a few months ago. And when I saw that video, I was just hoping and praying that they wouldn't come to Minneapolis. I've always been picky with my rides. I never accept the ping more than five miles away, especially if I'm near a downtown area, because I know that there's always gonna be a near request within a few minutes. So why did Lyft make this change? They're trying to incentivize drivers to accept all requests. So let's look at a hypothetical. Say I get a ping from 10 miles away now. Paying me a nearly 50% reduced mileage rate is enough incentive for me to want to accept that ride now? Here's a better idea, Lyft. Improve your algorithm and make your system more efficient so we don't get these long distant pings in the first place. I can't tell you how many times that I've declined a 10 plus mile away ping and then within a minute, I get a request that's right nearby within a mile. This is a system problem. Don't incentivize drivers to make your system more inefficient. And here's another idea. Maybe charge the passenger more and pay the driver more. Incentivize drivers more to accept if you want us to accept these 10 plus mile away requests. If you pay us well enough, we will accept those requests. Granted, your system is still inefficient by making us accept those 10 plus mile away requests. But if you want us to accept those, then incentivize us more, pay us better. Okay, so I wasn't happy going into this week. I knew these new rate changes were going into effect. I wasn't happy with them, but I figured I'd give it a try. And what I also wanted to do was track in a spreadsheet what my earnings this week would be compared to the previous week, the previous rates. And quickly we'll look at my old rate card versus my new rate card. And the main things to look at are the minimum fare stayed the same, which is a good thing. It stayed $4.40. You can see the per mile rate though went from 68 cents per mile to 35.2 cents per mile. And the per minute actually stayed the exact same at 20.8 cents per minute. And my typical driving is I drive heavy on Mondays and Tuesdays, about 10, 11 hours. And then I sprinkle in a few hours, Wednesday through Friday, I drive in the, during the morning rush on those days and sometimes Friday afternoon. I gave 55 rides for the week with an average pickup of two miles and six minutes away. My earnings were down 5% compared to the old rates and a whopping 25% on rides longer than 10 miles. Those rides used to be ideal, fantastic. That is no longer the case anymore. One semi-positive thing that I can point out, and I'm not sure if this is gonna be standard or Lyft has yet to catch it, but on queued rides, as soon as a ride, the instant that a ride was added to my queue, I was being paid time and distance. So essentially while I had the previous passenger in my car, I was being paid double time and distance. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that this is something that Lyft has not caught yet. I don't think they're gonna keep this as a standard thing. And I would have lost more money, but I was able to keep it at only about a 5% loss because I changed my strategy in the middle of the week. On Tuesday, uh, my average pickup was one and a half miles and five minutes, ideal under the old system. But I also got a lot of long rides on Tuesday, which aren't ideal anymore. Uh, my earnings on that day alone were down 10%. I was pretty pissed. Oh, and Lyft still has those 30 plus and 45 plus minute trip alerts when you receive a request in the app. I received two of those on Tuesday, uh, one of each, 130 plus, 145 plus. I immediately declined those because those are just not lucrative anymore. Um, and the pickups on those in the, under the previous rates were, fan I mean, th those pickups were, th were within a half mile. I would normally love to accept those rides. Now I declined them immediately because they're not worth it anymore. All right, so then Wednesday came, I decided I wanted to change my strategy. Um, Wednesday through Friday, I typically only drive during the morning rush hour. So I decided that I would just use destination mode. I live in the suburbs, I'd use destination mode to get me towards Minneapolis. And then once I was there, I'd go back and forth, north, south, east, west, just using destination mode. Now on those days, the first trip would, the long trip, which would bring me towards Minneapolis, into Minneapolis, I lose money on that. 
but the shorter rides I actually gained gained money on those compared to the old rates but overall for those days I was still down a few dollars not terrible but much better than my experience on Tuesday again a 5% decrease in earnings for the entire week and a 25% decrease in earnings on rides that were 10 plus miles not a great experience okay so here's the deal Lyft is going to continue to try to make their system more efficient with lower ETAs on pickups and the more efficient that system becomes, the less we get paid. And we should be happy when the system becomes more efficient. We shouldn't be hoping for longer pickups. The disconnect here is not good. So what should they have done instead of cutting rates? Again, improve the algorithm. Try and predict demand better. I shouldn't have to decline a, a 10 plus mile away ping because I personally know that I'm gonna get a request nearby within a minute. The system should know that. Also, do a better job of promoting scheduled rides for requests that come from the suburbs. Educate suburban users that if they schedule their, their ride, they have a better chance of getting a driver on time. And maybe also allow drivers to receive notifications when these scheduled rides are added to the system. There's many times where I would like to have a scheduled ride to maybe start my day and see that it's there, but there's no way you can get that notification. You have to go to the app and look in under the scheduled rides. And probably the easiest way to fix all this, and for those of us that have driven for long enough, this probably won't happen, pay us more incentivize us more, incentivize us to accept these long away pings. Cutting my mileage rate nearly in half is not going to incentivize me to accept all requests now. All right, so drivers that have been affected by these rates, what can you do? The main thing you can do is switch over to Uber. Um, Uber hasn't changed their rates yet, and I'm assuming they haven't done that because their system is more efficient in these markets. They have more drivers, they have a better algorithm than Lyft, so they haven't had to make this change. But we all know Uber well enough by now. If this does work for Lyft, Uber may follow suit soon with these changes. For those of you that continue to drive for Lyft, you're gonna wanna limit your longer rides and focus on the shorter and medium length ones. Long rides with nearby pickups are worth so much less now. And also, as long as Lyft keeps those long trip alerts, those 30 plus and 45 plus minute trip alerts in the app, decline those, they're just not worth it anymore. Also, you can try alternative ways of supplementing your rideshare income with services like Cargo and Freebird. Uh, we've done videos on both of those services and we have referral links in the description for those as well. And also make sure you're using an app like GetUpside to save money on gas. Um, you could easily make about 5-10% to 10 more by including 2-3 to three of these services and you can offset a pay cut like this. So again, these rate changes were a big mistake and it's actually unlike Lyft to take the lead on something like this. Uber has usually been the one to make a change like this, do the damage first, and then Lyft just follows along like a lost puppy. But Lyft is a public company now, so maybe the Uber mentality is beginning to pervade them. But how many of you were affected by these rate changes and what has it done to your bottom line? Have some of you just quit Lyft cold turkey? Have you come up with any strategies to beat Lyft's new pay structure? Leave a comment below and let us know. Thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, or subscribe and drive safe. Thanks.